I'm Karen Freeman, co-chair of the Friends of Indian Art Steering Committee, along with Ardith Eicher. We're delighted to present our second event of 2021, a talk with the Begay family of jewelers from their studio in Gallup, New Mexico. Our moderator this evening is Lilia McEnany. Did I get that right, Lilia? Yeah. Close enough, okay. Um, assistant Curator at the Museum of Indian Arts and Culture. Lilia, on behalf of Friends of Indian Art, thank you so much for all of your help on this event. And I would also like to acknowledge Rob Lucas, a member of the Friends of Indian Art Steering Committee for arranging tonight's presentation. There will be about a 45 minute presentation by Daryl, Rebecca and Robert, as well as a short film followed by 15 minutes of Q&A. Then at the end, I will come back very briefly to mention our May 20th event and a special offer only available to members of Friends of Indian Art. Thank you, Lilia, over to you. All right, um, thank you, Karen, for that introduction and thank you everybody for joining us. I know everybody is pretty zoomed out um, at this point. Um, so I appreciate you all being here on Zoom one year into the pandemic. Um, my name is Lilia McEnany and I am an assistant curator at the museum, like Karen said. And as you all know, we're here today to chat with Daryl, Rebecca and Robert Begay. So first of all, I'd like to briefly acknowledge the place where this conversation is happening, um, even though we are in a virtual space today and not at Mayak, but in we are and I am in Ogopoge within the Tewa world. As a non-native person living in so-called Santa Fe, I am a guest in the ancestral homelands of the Tewa people. And I wish to acknowledge all of the native people, Pueblo, Navajo, Apache, and so many others past, present, and future who walk on these lands and live within these places. So I'm gonna go ahead and introduce um, the Begays and then talk a little bit about the Goodman Fellowship and then introduce an upcoming program and then we can get going. So we're getting there. <laughs> um, Daryl Dean Begay has created his own niche in the native art world by using a variety of techniques, including tuba casting, stone inlay and traditional Navajo silversmithing. His jewelry designs are rich in Navajo culture and set with the highest grade stones. With a worldwide clientele, his work is widely sought after by collectors and galleries. His wife, Rebecca Begay, was inspired to be an artist at an early age. With a degree in art education and, a te and um, working as a teacher for many years, she now creates jewelry alongside her husband, who taught her the tuba cast technique. Rebecca is known for her delicate floral carvings and elegant designs. Finally, their 17-year-old son, Robert Whitehair Begay, is a gifted young artist and the recipient of Mayak's 2021 Goodman Aspiring Artist Fellowship. When Robert was six years old, he won his first two awards at Santa Fe Indian Market and more recently has won major awards at the Gallup Ceremonial and um, SWAYA. Robert's recent work reflects his experience as a young Navajo artist living in Gallup throughout the COVID-19 lockdown. So I just mentioned that Robert is a Goodman Fellow. And for those of you who do not know, the Goodman Aspiring Artist Fellowship was established at MIAC by Dr. and Mrs. Connie Goodman, who are members, friends, and supporters of the museum. The fellowship is designed to provide financial assistance to up and coming native artists who show pr promise and are eager to move to the next level of their development. And as I said, Robert is the most recent recipient and he uses his funds to purchase equipment and materials that enable him to advance his skills in stone inlay. And we are so pleased that Connie and Malcolm Goodman have been able to join us here this evening. Mayak is endlessly grateful for your generous support of young native artists. And we know that your support does not end at the awarding of the fellowship, but continues through the years. So thank you. Finally, last thing I promised, um, Mayak is excited to announce the start of a new lecture series titled Engaging the Future Conversations with Goodman Fellowship Artists. The series will be an opportunity for our Mayak community to become better acquainted with our Goodman Fellows through hour long Zoom visits to their home studios. They will bring us up to date on what they've been doing since receiving the fellowship and it will just be a general check-in. Um, the series kicks off with a visit to the studio of Taryn Laskun, a visual artist and printmaker on May 26th. Conversations with the fellows will continue on a monthly basis throughout 2021, usually on the fourth Wednesday of um, every month at 10 a.m. So keep an eye out um, for my ex-newsletter and social media for future dates. 
The Zoom information for my conversation with Taryn has been posted on our Facebook page, but will also be going out in the main newsletter. And thank you so much to um, Karen Freeman and Rob Lucas in particular for um, just being inc incredibly generous and kind with your time and expertise. So um, thank you everyone for be here, being here. And now I think we are ready to get started. Daryl, Robert, and Rebecca, um, thank you all for being here. And maybe for the viewers who aren't familiar with each of you, can you just maybe um, very briefly introduce, our, introduce yourself to, to get started? Um, hi, everyone. I'm Rebecca T. Begay, and um, I am originally from the Crown Point, New Mexico area, and which is just about maybe 60 miles um, north of here from Gallup. And uh, like they had mentioned in the beginning, you know, I um, did uh, have had always desired to be an artist at an early age. It just took me a while to grow into it. And thankfully, you know, now I'm, I'm doing that um, with my husband. Well, he was one of my main um, encouragers as well as he was, when we met, he was um, doing jewelry and I was taking a jewelry class as well at the same time when we met, first met in Flagstaff, Arizona at um, Northern Arizona University. And, um, you know, I'm just grateful that we're able to do this together and that our sons are picking it up, especially Robert, our youngest, you know, he's really, really doing well with it. And I'm very grateful. Um, <clears throat> my name is um, Daryl Begay. Um, I've been a jeweler for probably 22 years now. It'll be 23 in uh, summer. Um, yeah, just basically um, just trying my best to keep this um, technique alive, uh, keep the history going. It's a, it's an early Navajo uh, technique, uh, but also um, around the world for centuries and even uh, millennium, it has been used, stone casting has been, uh, you know, has been used around the world, but uh, we refined it. We made it our own, and uh, you know, I'm glad that my son's picking it up now. So, thank you for Maya staff, um, Connie Goodman, Malcolm Goodman, and Rob Lucas, Angela. Thank you so much. Hi, my name is Robert. I'm the son, and uh, uh, I've been uh, tuba casting since I was six years old. And I like to to uh, carve figures like uh, Navajo people. And um, yeah, I want to thank the Goodmans and Rob Lucas and uh, Angela and the Mayak staff for uh, granting me the fellowship. Fantastic. Okay, so you all mentioned Chupa casting, and I think that's really going to be the crux of our conversation today. And um, Daryl, maybe we can start by introducing Tufa and for those who might not be familiar with the technique. And I think maybe we can start with the video clip and then um, Daryl, you can kind of take it from there. Okay, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> I've been in two magazines so far. This piece here, I was influenced by uh, our warriors. And the tips here, this is just a rug pattern here to uh, represent our weavers here in the Southwest, which I really admire. You have to work in a harmonious way. You can't go into the studio with anything negative. So that spirituality part plays a major role in a lot of my work.
Now, I'm gonna show you a tufa stone. This is a tufa in the rough. What I do when I first get it is you slice it with a saw. The next process here is to make it flat. I would carve a bracelet size or pend it, and then I would carve the designs in there. The longer you take on it, the better because more details will come out. I soot it. The soot came from the torch. This is a bracelet. It's a sandstone, so the texture is already there. And then these are air vents. And then this is the sprue hole from the top. This is the backing. This is gonna go on top of here. So what I would do here is match these two together. And then here I use a clamp. This is just to keep the stone steady and in place that it doesn't tip over. These are cut off buttons that I've used before. This is sterling silver. And then this is my torch here. And then now I'm heating the metal. It usually takes about maybe three minutes or so. Sometimes I think about it in, in a spiritual sense. When you pour molten liquid silver into it, a mole, sometimes it doesn't come out. But if you look at the piece closer, it kind of forms itself. That's where the spirituality comes in. And it's like, it comes together it's almost in a miracle way. And you know, it's hard to explain that where they call it a binna, it creates itself. You know, this piece was meant to be this way. Instead of, you know, you, you're trying to make it the way you wanted it to be. Now it's like water and the molten silver is ready to be poured. Shake it. So that's what it comes out to. And then from there, I will snip it, use the grinder to smooth it out, and then anneal it, and then shape it, and then add whatever turquoise I want to add on. And then from there, I polish it, set the stone, and take it. Daryl, do you want to kind of maybe tell us a little bit more about Tufa that maybe um, we didn't get from the video? Okay, guys. Let's see. I'm going to show you, um, this is a raw tufa stone. And, you know, we, when we mine it, we have to dig it up ourselves. And this is like, um, this is sawed. See that perfect line? So we saw it into blocks. And there's a... There's two parts to the casting. So we cut them into blocks like this. So these are, and this is an actual tufa uh, blank. Think of it as um, like a canvas. Think of it as, um, you know, the blank piece of canvas and, you know, we're going to do our artwork. And um, I use a lot of pencil pencil marks to, can you see that pencil mark? Yeah. So, you know, I, I draw it out and then we carve, um, I guess it's just years of experience. You know how far to go down, you know, you draw, you carve your blank. And this is one of the tools that I use. So I, I think originally it was a potter's tool, but there's a little flat edge here. So we will start to form, you know, go along this line and just slowly carve it and then check it, you know, make sure it's nice and even. That way one side of the bracelet isn't thick and the other side is thin. So um, that's creating the mold. On the back side, there's two pieces. There will be a front and back. And with the back side, you put your initials, your hallmark. And a lot of times, 
you know, um, I like to do my full signature and my backward signature is actually better than my forward signature. Don't ask me how that happened, but it happened. So um, that's what you would do. So that's the, the basic concept of it. And I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna show you an actual mole. This mole is actually um, Robert's. So later on when everybody dem uh, talks about their work and everything, um, we're gonna cast Robert's mole. Let me show you his signature first, what I mean by writing backwards. You see that? Oh, wow. That's R W B it's backwards. But in the camera, it looks it looks like it's um forward. That's an illusion. So this is actually backwards. And so when we cast it, when it's casted, the signature will come out as you saw on the camera. And um, Robert really hasn't been carving. Um, he's been um, wrestling. He's in wrestling right now. And this is his senior year. So he's trying to keep up his um, A's and B's, trying to keep that grade point average up. And also, um, you know, he had a match this past weekend. So he's like juggling a lot of things and he's not carving as much, but he's still carving. Um, and this is one that he's, he's done. So this is what we're going to cast. This is an actual mole. And if you look at that square piece in the center, that's an actual, um, that's where, uh, when we cast it, bend it, shape it, that's where it'll have, this area is gonna be for, this area is gonna be for inlay. This is, this is one of the reasons why that uh, he chose that machine because you know he's gonna be some inlay in, in that area. And then also another thing you'll know about um, tufa casting is um, once this is casted, you'll see this area, a lot of it will be damaged. And that's why it comes out to one of a kind. So, you know, that's what I, you know, that's what we like about some of our work. So um, we'll be demonstrating that later. And one of the history about tupa casting real quick is that um, our ancestors, I think I have, um, some coins somewhere, but I, I have um, silver coins. Some of the silver coins um, back in the, uh, let's say about 18, I think around 1860s, you know, we started to really learn how to um, tufa cast because we didn't have um, a jewelry store, jewelry supply store. So we would, you know, um, pound out the silver, uh, the coin silver, we used brass bullets. We shaved off brass bullets and, and mixed it with um, the coin silver to make solder. How cool is that? So when we learn how to cast the tufa casting, we learn how to make, we call it bogards. It's a, it's a keto. We call it keto bogards. And you know, it's for decoration, it's for um, our councilman or our Navajo Nation president. You know, it's for status. You know, people would have bow guards, and you know, we found out that we could carve in the tufa stone. And some of the tufa stone actually is Gallup tufa um, from let's see, south of Gallup and then to the west of Gallup. There's a whole vein, there's a whole area that has uh, um, the, the, the tufa stone is actually kind of hard. Um, I have a sample here somewhere. The one we use, this one is Hopi tufa. This is on the Hopi reservation. And it's much softer and much lighter. With the Gallup tufa, actually, this is the back end is Gallup tufa. This is a little more. This one's grainier, 
um, some of it's very hard. And sometimes people want to tufa cast and their designs fail only because um, the, there's not enough, um, you know, I guess, um, like if it's too hard, that energy of the heat just vibrates and it just fades out. But if you have the right tufa, nice and soft, like this backing here, and proper air vents, these are air vents here. All these are air vents. Mines go at an angle upwards. The when you're casting, the, the silver escapes, so the energy is like released, and that texture will come out nice and clean. And that's what you want. You don't want um, you don't want um, you know like a lot of mistakes on your tufa. So that's really some of the the basics of tufa casting. And pretty soon, um, once we're done here, I'll show, uh, I'll show you how they, you know, how, how we soot this black stuff here. This is soot, soot we get from the torch. You know, like a candle, when it's really have a low flame, there's a, there's a little soot to it. We use it because it acts as a um, like pan. Pam, you know, it's Pam spray for cooking. You know, it's like non-stick. So the silver won't stick to this. You know, it'll it'll um, act as a lubricant too. So, you know, that's something that's 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 really cool. And one of the things that I'm known for, I just had two pieces that were really cool that I it, it just went in the mail. I wish I saved it for years. <laughs> Just to show you know my work, but um, I'm making this for a fellow Texan. Hint, hint, um, Malcolm. Um, this guy wants his brand, uh, you know, on a buckle. And there's two techniques I employ: tufa casting, and then also um, stamping, because I know how to do old style stamping now. Um, late 1800 style. Um, so this is his brand and this one took a lot of engineering as well. Um, but do you see that? That's, that's it. Yeah, that's his <laughs> brand. So that's pretty cool. Oh, that's so <laughs> I'm, going to, I'm going to put um, a piece of really nice, hard, natural, um, Egyptian turquoise. See that? Oh yeah. Wow. So this is how it's gonna look. And he's gonna wear that in somewhere in Texas. Yeah. So and that's my specialty. Um I love turquoise. I love the specimen. I love turquoise from around the world, not just here in the States. And, you know, uh, Egypt, you know, the pharaohs, they had turquoise that were put into, you know, their, I forgot what it's called, obelisk? You know, it's their coffins. And here's one. So this is a, an actual turquoise. Look at that. That's from Egypt. And this is nice and hard. Some of it is soft. Some of it is very soft, but this one is really nice and hard and jimmy. This one, this one took a really nice polish. So, and that's always my thing. People will talk about other mines. Sometimes it's true, sometimes it's not. I think a lot of turquoise, there's the 5% out of a whole mine run tons and tons of turquoise, only 5% will be high grade, will be top grade. That's what I use in my jewelry. Um, and then all the rest are doctored, they're altered, they're enhanced. And American mines, there's no, there's no difference. Even, even Lander Blue, 
the top 5% is the best and it's worth its money. And, but some of it is, is like this, you know how it has hills and valleys? See those little hills and valleys? So some of it, they were, you know, there's fillers that were put in there, you know, just to make it nice and smooth. And, um, you know, I love turquoise. I just wish that more honest people are out there. And if there's fillers, you know, give me a little bit of discount, you know, I'll still use it, you know. So that's what I'm known for. Um, a lot of high grade turquoise, coral, um, sujolite. Um, and I got to uh, apprentice for a short time under Raymond Niazi. He's a, a master inlayer, master metalsmith. And he taught me how to, to look, what to look for in a turquoise, what to see, what to seek out. So with that experience, you know, I'm trying to show, share with my, my family, my wife, my sons, so that their work will be put on a different level. And I'm always meticulous. I'm always meticulous with my work. There's no shortcut because, you know, people work hard for their money and I want to give people their money's worth. And, you know, I think that's one of the reasons why I have repeat customers that love my work and, you know, they want to um, spend their money with, with us. So, you know, I'm, I'm happy about that because we have to survive on our jewelry making. And during this pandemic, mm, it's kind of a blessing in disguise, to be honest, because I got to rest a little, a little, you know, I'm regaining my strength. Um, you know, I think that sometimes we're just go, 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 but, you know, we need to rest, uh, look, look, look back, look upon things. And my wife and I, our faith has grown, has grown tremendously in one year. So we're ready to get back into the rat race and to see you guys at the markets. So thank you very much. That's my short presentation. Rebecca and Robert will do their thing too. So, uh, yeah, it's Hago. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Daryl. That was so fantastic. Um, I really appreciated at the beginning how um, you said you think of Tuva as a blank canvas. And I think that really set up the rest of your description really well and actually helped me really understand the way that you think about it a lot better. So, thank you for that. Also, I would like to briefly say that you have extremely lucky clients. Um, that brand, thank you for showing us that brand um, belt buckle in progress. That was very, very cool. Um, thank you. Yeah, I mean, um, Rebecca, do you wanna? Yes, I'll, I'll go next. Um, okay, so for myself, I, I just have a few things that I'd like to show. Um, just to show and, and that we didn't want to, uh, you know, get um, uh, like scrape off the design pretty much. So you know, Daryl told you the whole um, start to finish process, well, almost finished process or the beginning stages of Tupa. And for me, that's what I really like to, um, that's mostly my forte, I guess you would say, is um, the Tupa carving process, because I really like to draw, and I've always liked drawing, and that is the um, main thing that I um, um, love about the tufa casting process. You know, when I met my husband, I was taking a first year course and I wasn't real sure if I would like jewelry, you know, making and also um, just metal smithing itself. So when I met him, you know, he introduced me eventually to this technique because he had just learned it that summer from his uncle 
Bobby. And so, um, you know, it took me a while to get into it, to really, uh, um, after we um, were together, it took a while for me to um, really see what it was all about. And once I really discovered what it was all about, you know, I just fell in love with it, with the Tufa casting process. And it's it's taken a while, you know, I, I think I, I'm going on the maybe 15 years of um, uh, carving and, and um, I guess jewelry making. And, you know, we started our family early. We have three sons all together. So I was focusing more on being a mom. And I did teach, I, I had received my degree more as a, um, as a backup, like a, a plan B, so to speak, um, for art education. And I did only teach one year at uh, my former high school, uh, which is just here um, near Gallup, like a mile away from Gallup. And, um, but, but like I said, we started our family young at the same time, so, I uh, focused on that for a while. I stopped teaching. It was just um, a bit too overwhelming. And um, I preferred, you know, at the time to, well, I guess this whole time too, my main priority has been my family. And then Tupa casting eventually came along and it's, it's kind of more secondary for me. You know, um, my family is uh, high on the list and as, as well as my, my faith and all of that. But this is an example here of a, um, a past piece. I believe I carved this back, I would say in 2007, maybe, because um, I remember because this was the first time I believe that I carved um, flowers. I held back on it. I thought, oh, it's too you know feminine for people and they won't really like it. You know, I was trying to appeal to everyone. But I just, you know, I just had to do it and wanted to experiment because I hadn't seen it anyway um, in the uh, Native American art scene as far as with tufa casting, because tufa casting, you know, is um, like a male dominated feel, what, what I've come to learn. And yes, there's always been Sanway, you know, but she has her own particular style, um, kind of similar to her uncles, um, Charles Lolima, and, um, and a lot of lapidary work. And for me, like I said, I, and you know, and, I, and there was others like Marion Denepa and, and others. And, and, you know, I was inspired a lot as well from, from all art forms, tufa casters and even painters and, and those who draw and, 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 um, and so, um, you know, I took a chance with this back in 2007. I remember that because in 2008 is when I used this particular piece when it was done. It was a um, seed pot, if you can see the little center hole there. And um, I used that as one of my slides to um, try out for the Swaya Fellowship. And, you know, um, thankfully I was able to acquire that that year in 2008 and from there you know I just kept experimenting with um flower designs and just whatever else you know I also like to do um uh lines and um shapes and and things like that those uh, I guess you would call them more like geometric designs uh let me grab a piece here This is, uh, I, wasn't, I wasn't sure if I was going to show this, but to give you an example of what I'm talking about, you know, this is an older piece as well. And this was part of a, a belt, um, just one piece um, of a contribution. And it has a cross. It, it, this one in particular is, is a special piece. It's um, based off of a story that my mom told me about her own, um, I guess, faith and salvation because, you know, I grew up, um, I was raised with a Christian faith. So um, my mom told me a certain story about her grandmother and um, how her grandmother encouraged her to keep her faith in Jesus. And, and 
But, you know, what I'm saying is that, like, I don't know if you see the fine lines and just the, there's other geometric shapes, um, shapes and also circles and across. And I like to do a lot of circle. I, I used to like to do a lot of circles. I need to get back to that as well as the fine lines, you know, even though it's, it's tedious, um, but different things like that. I, I've, um, I've uh, experimented with Tufa and I think a lot, I don't know if you all know, but a lot of you know, I like to do this type of, um, uh, also um, this type of designs and, and, um, uh, this is like my vine design. This was a bracelet that I had done. And I think, I believe we added um, flowers, either gold or silver on top of these. Um, that's why all you see are the vines and the um, leaves. So um, a lot of those, you know, a lot of people, a lot of this type people um, really like, and I'm, and I'm really glad, mostly female, but I do have a few male clients who, who enjoy my floral work, but majority, um, you know, like the other um, type of stuff I do, the, the geometric for, for the male part. Um, and, and, um, and another thing is I've always loved doing um, butterflies as well. Um, here's one silver, uh, sterling silver um, tufa cast piece. It's not, quite finished, but it's, um, you know, it's a, a piece that I carved and I've tried to experiment with the different um, ways to uh, give it more shape and, but I, I mostly kind of do a similar design just, you know, to, to uh, at the same time to, um, what's the word, like um, to specify, I guess, that it's, it's carved by me. And, and um, so these are uh, pieces, examples of what I've done. And I also wanted to mention, like, you know, Daryl mentioned that he really likes turquoise or loves turquoise. And I, I know he does. And for me, like I said, my thing is more the drawing aspect of the tufa um, design and stone doing that. And so I have very little stones for now on my pieces. but. I also wanted to say, like Daryl was saying, you know, he he's um, really, I need to learn more from him about the inlay part because um, my sons are finally grown. Robert's our youngest. He's going to be graduating this year. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll uh, I think I'll have more time to experiment more and um, with either uh, jewelry or, you know, I may, may also get back into drawing, but with jewelry, I'm also thinking I may um, take Daryl up on, you know, with the in inlay part, learning a lot of that from him uh, while, I, while I can. And hopefully, you know, I'm hoping it'll be um, uh, great. I, I really do like, you know, um, stonework. It is really beautiful. And I just haven't had quite as much time to really um, learn and, and really do a whole lot of like inlay together. Um, uh, for now, Daryl usually does a lot of um, the inlay for me, for my pieces. And, but I have designed, you know, some pieces, uh, 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 some like, like this with the center, um, like a channel here to inlay, um, stones which uh daryl would have uh, would inlay with for me and you know and then i would have carved the um out, outer design and so that's you know some things we're looking forward to or i'm looking forward to doing um soon or maybe hopefully later this fall um i could start or as as the new year begins um I can start to really see where I'm going to um, take my artwork again. And for now, you know, I'm just really happy to be and grateful to be able to do to do what I can for now. And, you know, I I uh, 
I've learned, um, I don't know if some people know that I have had, had the past several years, I dealt with um, health issues. And so that's, you know, I've had to um, slow down and pace myself and focus, you know, take care of myself as well, not just, um, you know, others all the time. And so that's why I, I don't have um, really uh, much to show just these right now. And as I've been trying to help um, Robert um, with his schooling, and then we do have our other middle son who, who has dealt with health issues as well and is also gonna be graduating. Um, he got a bit behind in school due to health issues and he'll be, thankfully he'll be graduating this year as well. So we've been trying to, as, as you know, it's already April, May's coming up. So we're going to be, um, dealing with graduations and thankfully we get to celebrate this year, even if it's um, maybe not with everybody, but you know, at least we'll get to have some sort of celebration. And, you know, I just thank you all so much for, for everything, for supporting us all these years. For those of you who have stuck by us ever since the Robert was, you know, four or even a baby, we've had some people, you know, remember him as a baby, as an infant. And um, only a rare few remember our oldest, Matthew, when he was an infant, because uh, that's the time Daryl really started. That's what Daryl actually goes by for um, the date of when he started, because our oldest is going to be 23 this year. So it's been almost 23 years that Daryl um, has, uh, you know, been into this as well and been doing this. And it, it just flew by, you know, so fast. So. We're, and I'm, I'm just very grateful to, to, you know, be able to do this with him and that our, our sons are picking it up and, and, you know, we just hope to continue again. And like I said, I, I thank you all so much for supporting us and even for the newcomers, you know, for being interested in us. <laughs> so thank you all so much. And I guess I'll pass it over to Robert now. <laughs> I know Daryl still wants to do the um, casting as well too. So uh, I'm not quite sure how long that'll take. Thank you. Speaking of time flying by, we only have about 10 minutes left. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> so I'm not sure. Um, I think we can probably go a little bit over. I think everybody's really excited to hear um, everything that you guys have to say. And Rebecca, thank you so much for sharing all of that. Um, and I'm really glad to hear that you're taking care of yourself. Um, I think it's so important, especially now for all of us today. Yes, yes thank you. Yeah. Good evening, Good evening everyone. So uh, I've been very busy during the pandemic. You know, uh, I wasn't in school. So uh, my uh, I was able to, to do art, and this is my uh, this is my most recent work that I've been doing. I've done a lot of bolo ties during the pandemic, and uh, and uh, I got a I got a special um, a special order from a client who wants a concho belt surrounding the the pandemic so uh, here's a few pieces it's a oh. <laughs> Navajo man with, with a gas mask and he has a uh, a head a head headwear he is this is gonna have um inlay inlay stones for the eyes and uh Here's um here's a picture of um of of a Navajo man in a grocery store. He has the, the last toilet paper. And uh you know this guy's chasing him. That was when um toilet paper toilet paper shortage happened. <laughs> this is incredible. <laughs> I oh my gosh. Wow. <laughs> and here's a portrait of, of a Navajo man wearing a mask. I like to to draw Navajo men and carve them. It's it's uh, very fun to me. 
And here's a portrait of a family. And they all have gas masks. You got the, the son and the daughter. And husband and wife. These are <laughs> father portrait. He's wearing a, a mask. This this took a while. It took a long time to carve all the all the uh the contours. And lastly, um here's a Navajo man is selling masks and toilet paper on the side of the road because I saw that a lot during the pandemic, like um, people would sell disinfected wipes and everything, um, you know, just go around selling them. <laughs> and uh, here's my sketchbook. It's, uh, this is, um, I recently did this about last month. It started off as a sketch and I was able to turn it into an actual piece. Wow. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be a bolo tie. Yeah, thank you. And this, this is what I like to do. I like to carve the facial features and everything else, the outfit. And um, I was able to to do this piece that's a little more contemporary. And I was able to inlay the um, the middle here with the with the machine that I was granted from the Goodmans with with the fellowship. One of them. <laughs> Just real quick, there's the machine that, yeah. Wow. And um, I think that's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Robert has really, really, uh, he, he's just like really picked up the tuba cast. Um, I mean, the, the whole thing just, it, it's like a, extraordinary to me because I don't think I can carve like that as well the figures I haven't I've done a few figures but they've been really small but for him to you know be able to do this kind of work to me is just amazing with all the with all the detail and the braid on, on this man and even the facial expression you know it's all so amazing to me and um and uh i'm just really really glad that he he uh he loves it as well and can can do you know that can do that type of um carving it's just exceptional and and um and like the pieces he was showing you were for uh before the square ones are for a a concha belt a special order that he still needs to um finish up as well and and even this you know, I'm so glad he he does way, you know, way better work than I do. <laughs> this is the type of type of designs I like to um, do as well. But this is all his own. This is his uh, something he's come up with himself, as he was saying. And I just I just love that. And and he's he I think he loves what I do too, like experimenting with the different textures. Um, and giving it different effects in the tufa, tufa um, stone. And I think uh, Daryl's gonna ready to to um, do his part again. Shall we cast real quick? Yeah, yeah, I think everybody's excited. It's okay if we go a little bit. Okay, so we're gonna go to my casting station right here. And you can probably, um, Kind of like mute your mute your. Do you, do you want me to mute you? Is it going to be? Loud? Yeah, because the torch is going to be loud.
that's 100% cast. Can you see it? Bring some more all And look at this. That's one of a kind, the one I was talking about. So that mold is totally destroyed. So this is a one of a kind bracelet by Robert Begay. Um, Daryl, thank you so much for sharing that. Um, that was kind of incredible. Check that out. Was that cool or what? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Fantastic. So that's that's about it. This is what we do as a family. We appreciate everyone joining us. Yep. And I don't know if there's going to be Q&A or... But there is one question that I do think a lot of people that you guys haven't touched on that a lot of people will want to hear from, um, which is if you keep an archive of all of your, um, all of your tufa. Um, no, um, because tufa is so valuable that, you know, we have to resurface it and then reuse it. But... These, the one that Rebecca showed you, and then I have some in the back. Um, we do keep um, a handful uh, for reference and stuff like that. Great, thank you. And then a mold can only be used once, right? Uh, yes, so that mold, the one I showed you, will be resurfaced mm -hmm. and reused afterwards, or the back side, you know, whatever side is good. Fantastic. Okay. Um, I think that can wrap us up. I think you answered most of the other questions during um, other parts of the presentation. So thank you, um, Daryl, Rebecca, and Robert for your time. I really appreciate you sharing your expertise with us today. And I'm going to hand it over to Karen to kind of wrap us up. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you, Daryl and Rebecca and Robert. That was wonderful. I'm sorry about the glitches. Um, for those of you who are still on, our next Friends of Indian Art event will be Thursday, May 20th at 5.30 p.m. when we will virtually tour the new glass exhibit. And that tour will be given by the curator, Dr. Leticia Chambers. I hear that the exhibit is amazing. Um, and I hope that you read in, the, in our e-blast, the little teaser that Friends of Indian Art members only are going to be offered the exhibit program signed by Dr. Chambers at a 10% discount. We'll be sending out more information about that, but that's a special offer for you from the museum shops and we thank them for that. Please stay safe and well, and we look forward to seeing you in May. Oh my goodness, May. Thank you, Begays. Thank you too, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Lilia.